Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Technos product review. When I ask you to name a Silicon Valley portable power company that's been around for nearly a decade, the first name that probably comes to mind is Jackery. Now, what if I told you there's been another Silicon Valley portable power company around almost as long and has just recently busted into the solar generator market? Now, since you already read the title of this video, you know that we're talking about Zender. Zender has been around since 2013 and in the last few years has had more than a half dozen successful crowdfunding campaigns totaling over $5 million. Last year, they launched the Superbase 500 power station, and in 2021, it's the bigger Superbase Pro. The Superbase Pro comes in two different flavors, and today we're going to be reviewing the larger of the two. Let's check it out. As mentioned, the Superbase Pro comes in two different flavors a 2096 watt hour with automotive grade NMC batteries and a 1456 watt hour lithium iron phosphate version. This is the NMC version and is rated at 1500 cycles to 80% capacity. That's four years of daily charging cycles and that should be plenty for most. Note that both versions weigh virtually the same, but you get over 600 watt hours more with this NMC version. As for size and weight, the size I'll put here at the bottom of the screen, Weight, I weighed this myself with my own scale. It came in at 46.6 pounds. As for build quality, it is ABS plastic all the way around. It does have these plastic wheels and it does have an extendable luggage style handle which you can pull out and roll it around. As for the display, it has this nice big six inch color LCD that is not a touch screen, but it's very visible and clear even in bright light. As for inverter, this has a 2000 watt pure sign inverter with a 4000 watt surge and on the side sports six 20 amp outlets. Note that Zender does offer a feature called Amp Up, which works the same as EcoFlow's X-Boost. It will allow you to power devices up to 3000 watts by dropping the output voltage. As for solar charging ability, Zender does claim a 600 watt MPPT controller input that runs from 12 to 60 volts. But it also offers a second input on this, which can do up to 1800 watts through the AC input. Yes, I said the AC input. Let me show you how that works. Now, Zender has done something that I've never seen before anywhere, ever in the history of any electronics I've ever used is the fact that they provide a 120 volt AC wall charger cable. Now this is typical, you'd get an AC wall charger cable with an EcoFlow Delta and various other solar generators. But what's very different is that on the other side is MC4 solar cables, DC MC4 solar cables, and plug it into an AC wall outlet 120 volt. I checked the book. It says yes. This input, this AC input on the side, you can plug it into the wall or you can plug solar into it. Now, how does that work? How can you plug AC or DC into the same source? They got some trickery going on inside. It probably detects AC or DC and switches a circuit. You know, so it's not, not an impossible thing, but it's it's the oddest way I've ever seen of handling this. It's weird. It's, it makes me very uncomfortable to plug in a whole bunch of DC into an AC port. But this is Hobo Tech. We're going to do it. If it blows up, I want it to blow up on camera. So let's hook this up and see what we can get it to do. All right, now we're simulating solar into the AC input, which says can take from 60 to 160 volts up to 1800 watts. I have my voltage converter set to 65 volts so that's where we're going to start a little icon showed up it said 270 watts and then the icon disappeared well, let's try it again 760 watts for a split second and then it shuts off okay i'm at 98 volts it's not doing anything let me try switching out my voltage converter to my other one which isn't as powerful and see if we can at least get it to work okay i do have my other voltage regulator plugged in this does have a display on it and it has buttons that allows me to actually change the voltage. This goes up to 120 volts. So I can at least test and see what this does at 120 volts. 
Now the problem with this is it's smaller. I'm pretty sure this has a limit of around 600 watts, so we're not gonna be able to press this to the 1800 watt limit. So you can see right here, it says 120 volts, 15 amps. The 15 amps is the maximum that this will do. This unit itself, because of the heat sink, they limit this to, I think, six or 800 watts. So it's the voltage is dropping because it is pulling amps. So it's dropped the voltage all the way down to 62. Yeah, so it's maxing out. It looks like at about 600 watts here. So short of actually plugging in 1800 watts of solar panels, which I technically could do, but the fact of the matter that it's raining this week and it's loaded with clouds still wouldn't be much of a better test. That's all I can tell you right now. It'll take at least 600 watts and 120 volts. As for ways to charge, Zender does offer this little case, which has the instructions built in. You get the AC charging cable. You can charge from a wall outlet. You get a cable with MC4 to AC adapter, which I just showed you how that works. And you get MC4 to XT60 adapter for normal 60 volt solar input. Now this can charge from max solar up to 2,400 claimed watts. That's using both of these cores at the same time. So you put 1,800 watts of solar panels on this one, and you put 600 watts of solar panels on this one. That means you can charge the Zender in about an hour. Now you can also charge from AC wall outlet or gas, propane, diesel, whatever generator, takes about an hour and a half, and that's at 1800 watts. There's an optional EV charger, and you can charge at about the same time, and there's also an optional 12 volt car charger, which is not included. As for 12 volt outputs on this, you have four total. You have three on the front, that is 55, 21 barrel plugs, and then you have a single 12 volt car, cigarette light, or accessory output on the side. These are all regulated at 13.6 volts and they all share the same 10 amp circuit. As for USB outputs, this is a little bit unique. They offer two 100 watt power delivery outputs, which are USB-C, and then another pair of 20 watt USB-C outputs. There are no regular USB-A ports or USB-A quick charge ports on this, which is the first time I've ever seen a solar generator get this bold and only include four power delivery ports. Now you can actually convert some of these over to USB-A quick charge ports. I do have some adapters available on hobotech.tv slash Amazon under adapters, which will allow you to turn some of these into normal USB ports. Now one of the coolest things about the Superbase Pro is that it sports a true uninterruptible power supply feature, meaning it has a built-in UPS relay that'll switch loads automatically between grid power and battery power if the power goes out in your house or your RV or wherever you're using this. As for the warranty, Zender does offer a three-year warranty to backers of this project, and if they reach their $1 million stretch goal, they're gonna bump that up to four years. And they're pretty darn close right now to hitting that $1 million goal. And of course, the professor took the Zender Super Base Pro into his brand new secret laboratory, which we're in right now, and performed all kinds of crazy experiments on it, including a double-fisted battery discharge test. As you can see from the results of the DC battery capacity test, it scored 1,913 watt hours out of 2,096, or a very cool 91%. But wait, there's more. If we look at the results from the AC battery capacity test, it did even better. 1,950 watt hours out of 2,096, or a very impressive 93%. This is one of the highest rated out there and even beats the coveted EcoFlow Delta Pro on efficiency. All right, we're back and the next test is going to be the max charge rate test. How fast can we charge the Zender Superbase Pro? So I have an 1800 watt charger that sends it into the voltage booster, boosts it to 60 volts or more, depending on how I have it set. 
sends it into the Super Base Pro. Now they say 600 watts from the solar port. I'm gonna hit the button, plug it in, and then over here I'm gonna show you the volts. And the Super Base Pro is now charging at 495 watts. So you can see right here, I am pumping 60 volts into the system. The Super Base Pro says 495 watts. It doesn't seem like it's taken 600 watts, and I've tried everything. It's not this charger. This charger outputs 48 volts at 37 amps, which is 1800 watts. This supports 15 amps, no problem. So whatever I pump into this, I can get 15 amps out of this, no problem. So I should be getting easily 600 watts if this supports 600 watts. Maybe a firmware update will allow me to unlock it to 600 watts. But I'm reporting right here that the Zender Super Base Pro looks like it charges at 500 watts in the solar port. Oh, and I guess before I go to the next step, what I should do is see how much voltage can I push into the DC port on this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to adjust the pot, and that's a different kind of pot. It's the pot on my little electronics booster here. And I'm gonna turn up the voltage and watch the voltage on the meter. Now, the upper limit on this is 60 volts, but it should be able to handle a little bit more than that. Okay, we're at 70 volts, it's still taking it. Let's keep taking it up. All right, this thing will go up to 100 volts. I don't think it's gonna go much further, but let's see what we can get here. It's 80 volts. Okay, I don't think I really wanna press it much higher than this. This is crazy. Why did they even state it was 60 volts? I'm just gonna take it all the way up to 100 and see what happens. If it fries it, it fries it, right? That's as high as it, I can get it to go. 97 volts, it's still doing only 500 watts of charging though. So just like before, I'm gonna turn this off and back on and see if this is a fluke. Nope, it's taking 97 volts. See, it says it right there, 600 watts max from the XT60 from 12 to 60 volts. And then it says 1800 watts max from the AC input from 60 to 160 volts. So Zender, I have to ask you, why can I put 100 volts in if the limit's only 60? Why don't you just make the limit 100 volts or however many volts it is? So that way people can put more solar panels in series. Now, I don't know if this is a fluke because this is their prototype and the final version will be limited to 60 volts, but mine certainly isn't. I'm pumping 100 volts into this sucker and it's taking it like a charm, like no problem whatsoever. It's still charging at a maximum of 500 watts. So that's the results of the max charge rate test. So we already know the Super Base Pro can charge at 1800 watts from the AC wall outlet. So I have it plugged into the wall right now and it is charging at 1800 watts. Now it's charging the power supply, pretty close to 2300 watts. This means that the Super Base Pro does support simultaneous charging from two separate sources. You have two inputs on this, an AC and a DC, or AC-DC combo, plus a DC. And that allows you to use them both to charge the battery at the same time. And at 2300 watts, you can charge this in less than an hour from dead to full, which is pretty cool. Now, while the Super Base Pro is charging at its 1800 watts from the wall outlet, it does make an awful lot of noise. Let's see how loud that noise is. So here we are about a meter away. Around 59 decibels. The Super Bass Pro does offer a cigarette lighter output on the side. It is regulated at 13.6 volts and can output 10 amps, no problem, and a nice rock solid 12 volts. Okay, I have my laptop playing a video and I have this contraption over here rigged up to pull 100 watts from the power delivery. That's what I'm doing right now. It says it's pulling 100 watts, but I'm gonna go ahead and plug the laptop in to the other 100 watt power delivery port and see, do we have two real 100 watt power delivery ports or does it split the power? Because in most cases they split the power. So we're gonna find out right now, I have my five amp gold plated USB-C cable. So I know for sure this can handle 100 watts power delivery. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Look at that, 200 watts out of the dual 100 watt power delivery cables. So that's proof right there that this actually has two 100 watt power delivery ports that can be used simultaneously. So you can actually charge two laptops at 100 watts at the same time. That's pretty rare and very cool in the case of the Zender. Now seems as good a time as any to do the pure sine wave check under load. So let's put it on our 2000 watt load and see what the sine wave looks like. Sine wave looks good. We're running 109 volts at 60 Hertz. Now it's time for the inverter capacity test. And you know what that means? Dun, dun, duh. 
it's the solar degenerator. Let's go ahead and push this 2000 watt inverter to its limit. Now they do say it can take up to 3000 watts through that black magic voltage dropping thing, but I'm gonna shut that off because I wanna see what this can really do. I don't want any fudgery, I don't want any fakery. Will it run a 2000 watt product or not? First of all, we're gonna go ahead and fire up this heater. So let's go ahead and turn it on now. It's actually chilly in here, so this will be welcome. Let's put on the inverter. Okay, it looks like we're capped out around 1260 watts. It says it can run this for about two hours, which sounds about right. It is running at 1.0 power factor. One thing I noticed is that the inverter is pretty loud. So I want you guys to hear this. This is the inverter fans. All right, I'm about a meter away or three feet from the unit. Let's see what kind of decibels we're getting. 59 decibels. So 59 decibels gives you an idea of how loud this is. That is definitely on the louder side. Let's go ahead and fire up the solar degenerator and see what happens. Okay, we're 2000, 21, 22, 23. And right there, we dropped at around, right around 2,400 watts. Boy, that fan is certainly cranking, isn't it? So those results work for me. I'm able to push it beyond 2,000 watts. It doesn't start blowing smoke. It doesn't smell funny. It doesn't burn up, blow up, or anything else. That means it should be a pretty decent inverter. Now, the real test is gonna be, let's run it at its rated 2,000 watts for at least five minutes and see if it can handle that without overheating. Okay, we got our stopwatch. Let's go ahead and start the inverter again. We're just gonna start the heater on the floor. I'll apply solar degenerator to get us to as close as I can to 2000 watts, and we'll start the timer. Now that we're running a 2000 watt load, we're gonna go ahead and see if it can do it for five minutes without any kind of problems. Now let's have a little bit of sorry and brandy while we're waiting. A little clinky. What can I do for you, Jim? I said give me the brandy! And there we have it, five minutes, no problem. So five minutes on, we're still running, thumbs up. Now I do have to say that unlike a Blue Eddy, when I shut that inverter off, those fans are still cruising. They're still cruising at max speed, sounds like a couple of hair dryers. But it is keeping it cool. So just be aware, if you're looking for a quiet product, you might have to wait a couple of minutes after you turn off the inverter for those fans to stop. The Super Bass Pro advertises a true UPS function, which means it actually has a UPS relay built into this, and UPS stands for Uninterruptible Power Supply. That means when the power goes out, the SBP will continue to power your loads. However, there is a delay, and I want to show you this. So right now I have this heater being powered by the Super Bass Pro. It's pulling about 1220 watts. I do have this outlet over here plugged into the wall with a watt meter on it. It tells me how many watts the unit is pulling. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch this on. You'll see the light come on. That means we're sending power to the Super Bass Pro. Okay, so now we're sending 1800 watts from the wall into the Super Bass Pro. Now, since the battery isn't fully charged, it wants to charge the battery but it also wants to power this load at the same time. So it's got a 1200 watt load coming out and about 500 watts of charging coming in. So you add 1300 to 500, you get 1800 watts. That's exactly what it's pulling from the wall right now. And we can see right here that the sine wave is good. And since the outlet's being powered from the wall, it's at 115 volts. Now the Super Bass Pro powers the outlets at 110 volts. So that's how you can tell the difference. Now there's something I wanna show you. When I switch the power off on the wall, so we go ahead and switch the switch off, watch the light. Do you see that light blink? Now again, watch the light. I'm gonna turn the power off to the Super Bass Pro. See that light blink twice? I'm gonna do the same thing, but this time watch the meter. See that? So the UPS feature on this works perfectly fine, but just be aware, don't plug computers and things into this inverter and expect them to switch over seamlessly if the power goes out. 
This is meant for appliances, like you could have an air conditioner or refrigerator or something like that plugged into here. And then that way if the power goes out, the refrigerator air conditioner isn't gonna notice that blink, that voltage drop like a computer would. Like if I had my computer plugged into this, it would just either freeze up or it would probably just shut off and reboot. I'm guessing that blink is pretty long. In the terms of electricity, actually seeing a light go out and come back on means it's probably a good half a second before it switches over the power. And you get that voltage drop, it goes below 100 volts and back up again. That means this is not suitable for use with computers. Now, I don't mean you can't plug your laptop in because your laptop has its own battery built in. If you pull the plug, on your laptop, it doesn't blink out, right? I'm talking about like a regular computer or a server, PC, something like that that has to be plugged into the wall for power. Now it's perfectly fine in a blackout to just go ahead, turn the inverter on, plug your computer in and use it that way. But I wouldn't rely on that UPS relay saving your computer because of that long delay. This next test is the amp interference test. This is where I plug in my little PV keyboard amp into the inverter on the Zender to see is it a noisy power supply. Sometimes on some of these solar generators, you plug something like an amplifier in and you get all kinds of noise that comes through and out of the speaker. So we're gonna go ahead and test that right now. So all I have to do is hit the AC inverter, you'll hear a loud pop, and then I'll put my microphone over to the speaker so you can hear the sound for yourself. So it sounds pretty clean. That means that the Zender has a very well-designed inverter. It puts out the power it's supposed to, it's very clean under load, and it doesn't pass through any interference. But there is one thing I noticed. Even though this amp is only pulling five watts from the inverter, the fan is running on the Zender. So this means for any load, on the inverter, you can expect to hear the fans run. Now they're not running on high, they're running on low, but that does mean you're gonna hear fans anytime the inverter's on. Now here's an overview of the current version of the Zender app on Android. Okay, you can see the screen here it gives you the percent charge, which is 58%, tells you how long it's gonna charge the remaining time, input and output watts, allows you to turn on and off AC and DC, the input, it allows you to raise or lower how fast you want to charge it. So this is the same feature you get from the Delta Pro where you can adjust how much AC power comes in. It shows you all the different outputs that's going on. You can change the frequency down here to 50 or 60 hertz. If you click on modes, you can enable or disable sleep mode. And this is where you can turn on or off amp up mode, which allows you to run devices up to 3000 watts by lowering the voltage. I recommend you leave that off unless you really need it. I even know this had an ambient light on it until now. It's got a light underneath here. I see that redness there. They go into battery. This doesn't seem to do anything. It just tells you what percentages you should probably charge to if you're gonna do daily or it says trip. Here's where you turn on and off 4G. And then this is where you actually do firmware updates. And I did check and see if there was a firmware update. It says yeah, I'm using the latest version. That's really all there is to it. Speaking of the app, note that it does require signing up for Zender's cloud service and sharing your location over Wi-Fi. I tried firewalling the app after setup and it simply won't log on without internet access. They do offer a built-in 4G modem. Yes, there's actually a 4G modem inside of this and a GPS locator so you can access the device remotely anywhere you don't have a Wi-Fi connection. If you don't wish to be spied on everywhere you go, you can still use the Superbase Pro without the app and you can turn off the wireless features with a press of a button. That button right there. Now Zender did send me a couple of accessories. One is what I believe is a rainproof covering for the Zender. And I say I believe it's made for rain because it's made of a vinyl and it has these flaps which you can close. And then they have these little, I thought this was a really cool idea, these little basically hangers that are Velcro. You stick it there and allows the air to vent out yet still allows a little bit of splash, and same with this side. This side is where all the AC outlets are. So I thought that's actually a really cool idea. You got this little Velcro flap so you can access your USB ports. It even has a little window down here for the light. And you can see through the screen, push all the buttons, and a zipper 
For the handle, this is why I think it's for the rain, because why would you zipper the handle closed unless you didn't want water to get in here, right? So there's your handle. So say you want to go carry it, and then it's raining, and you're like, oh, okay, let's close it. And this also has a zippered pouch for the luggage extender handle too. Pretty cool. And what I didn't expect is that they actually put my name on it. So I guess I can never resell this unless somebody wants a Hobo Tech cover on their Zender. That's certainly a nice touch. I wonder if they'll do that for everyone. Can you get your own name put on there? That would be pretty cool. And what else they sent me was their EV charging adapter. Now, basically, this takes an EV charger on the inside right there. And then on the other side, they have a three-prong outlet in here. You use the regular cable that comes with this, regular AC wall cable. Plug that in, and then you're essentially charging from the EV station. I think this just supports the 240 volts, because I don't see how it would convert power down below that, because I know this unit will support up to 240 volts charging. So I'm guessing it's probably only compatible with those kinds of chargers. You're not gonna plug this into a Tesla supercharger at like 600 volts or whatever they are. That's, that's just not gonna work. So what do I like about the Zender Superbase Pro? Well, first it has to be the packaging. This is a great size, a great shape, at a very manageable weight. And while it's a piece of cake for most just to haul it around with one hand, if you're unable or unwilling to carry 50 pounds, then simply extend the pull handle and pretend it's carry-on luggage. The screen is very good and bright, even in direct sunlight, although you'll get a ton of reflections on the glass, which you probably noticed watching this video. And with no external power supply to worry about and a basic UPS function, you can easily move this around on your property, job site, or campsite to power stuff just about anywhere. And with the optional cover and EV charging adapter, you can even charge it from the back of your car on a rainy day. And while it's totally obvious that Zendur did actually rip off EcoFlow's design, this is actually a really good thing because Zender pulls it off at a much lower price point of around only 62 cents per watt hour. This is typically Blue Eddy territory, but with a 93% usable battery capacity. So if you ever wondered what would happen if EcoFlow and Blue Eddy got together and had a love child, it would be this. So what don't I like about the Super Bass Pro? Well, not a lot. I do have a couple of gripes. First, I absolutely hate the app. There, I said it. I literally wasted five hours trying to get it to work. It's obviously in beta stage right now and it needs a lot more work to be user-friendly before it reaches your hands. And just like EcoFlow, they force their cloud services down your throat and there are functions you just can't change without installing the app. For example, in order to change the amp up feature to turn that on or off, which is that feature which will allow you to run higher wattage appliances by dropping the voltage, you need to install the app to disable that. If you want to change the charge speed, because you can actually change the charge speed from I think three or 400 watts up to 1800 watts, you can only do that through the app. If you want to turn on the fancy light underneath, you got to do that through the app. If you want to enable or disable the sounds, you got to do it through the app. I think you see where I'm going here. And the worst part is, since there's no Bluetooth support, that means you either have to have Wi-Fi or use their 4G service. So if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you don't have internet access, then good luck. As for my next gripe about the product, it's just too darn loud. It's not only loud when charging, but it's also loud when running the inverter. Now keep this in mind if you're not a fan of fans. And finally, I'm really not all that impressed with the overall build quality. It's also covered in more stretch marks than Britney Spears and is about as loud. Now, this is a prototype model they sent out to testers, so let's hope that the final case design is prettier and they do something about the noise. All that being said, it's a solid first effort for a large Sojen. Everything works as it should. All the outputs output what they say they're supposed to, and the design and packaging is actually very impressive. I suspect we're gonna see a lot more from Zender in the near future. Now for the best part, 
product price. For the remainder of the Indiegogo campaign, the current going price is $12.99, and that's for this model, and only $9.99 for the smaller lithium iron phosphate version. This is some really aggressive pricing. Note that as of the filming of this video, there's less than a week left remaining on the campaign, so if you want to lock in these prices, you'll want to act fast. I have no idea what the retail price is supposed to be or when the retail product is actually supposed to come out, but the price for sure will be a lot more than this. As for the main competition, Zender is competing directly with the EcoFlow Delta Max and the Blue Eddy AC200 Max. While the latter two brands are far more established when it comes to whipping out top-end solar generators, they need to be concerned about this latecomer to the game. Zender, with their first attempt at a large generator, has already embarrassed Jackery's flagship offering. The market focus for this is pretty clear. They're aiming right at Jackery's claim for the portable outdoor power market by offering a two kilowatt generator that can be carried with one hand or pulled around like luggage over most terrain. They basically offer a poncho to say, hey, use me outside, yo. As for solar panels, Zender does offer solar panels as part of their campaign packaging, but they want 800 bucks for a pair of 200 watt panels. You can find a lot cheaper options if you go to hobotech.tv slash Amazon, click on solar panel kits, and the link is in the description of this video along with a link to the Superbase Pro if you're interested in checking it out. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. Deep, 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 deep. That's all, folks. RV Golf Guy at Medic Audio Repair. Andrew Vaughn, Roger Cardano, Brian Blue, first John Stacey Soroko.